Why hello there all and welcome to one of my late night musings once again. This might actually become a theme where I just sit in the dark. You might think it's because I want to make myself look mysterious and all that, but realistically the darkness just hides all my imperfections. <laughs> Anyway, today I was uh, stumbling around through various subreddits just doing what I normally do which is like completely wasting time and I ended up in the Tokipona subreddit and before you ask me what Tokipona is, it's a constructed language, I'll get into some more detail about it later, but I wanted to bring this up because while in there I then happened across another thread and then that thread led me down a rabbit hole into the Wayback Machine and it led me to what looked like someone trying to build a Tokipona computer which is by God the most coolest thing I have seen in so long. Now, what is Tokipona for those who don't know? I'm assuming at least a portion of my audience knows what it is, but this is what it is according to Wikipedia. So Tokipona is the language of good. That's literally how it translates. So Pona and then Toki. So Pona means good, Toki means to speak or language. And it says it's a philosophical, artistic, constructed language known for its small vocabulary, simplicity and ease of acquisition and what it's most well known for is the fact that it has like 137 essential words. Now, I have a long on and off love-hate relationship with Tokipon and it goes back a very long time. So something like five plus years ago, one of my friends who speaks Esperanto was also fluent in Tokipon. He he introduced the language to me and tried to convince me to learn it. And when I had it, heard that it had 137 words, I was like, that sounds like really interesting in one way, but how does that work in another? So I went and did a couple of courses online and I learned, I would say, the real basics of the language, but I never utilized it in any way, shape or form. And realistically, I actually found the language to be quite difficult. Now. I say difficult because at the beginning it's very easy to get the basics because there's like 137 words or whatever and like basic conversations about the most basic of things you could learn within a day so it's, it's really easy to pick it up but then it gets difficult with the the fact that it's such an, an ambiguous language. See, Tokipona, due to its limited number of words, requires a lot of stacking to create precision and like a lot of stacking. So instead, people resort to just kind of context and ambiguity to get their thoughts across, which to me is difficult because I'm a person who prefers precision over ambiguity. Um, maybe that's from my programmer background, I don't know, but that's just how I am. So a language like Esperanto, which allows precision uh, attracts me, but it also allows ambiguity when I want it. Now, then you've got other languages like Lojban, which is this other constructed language, which is basically the equivalent of a, a spoken computer language. Um, in some ways, it interests me, but it's over precise. And then don't even get me started on like equal or however it's pronounced. Equal, equal, I, I can't remember. There's another constructed language which is like precision to the next level of insanity. You, you, once you go down that route, there's no coming back. You, you're gone, okay? So you gotta be careful. That's like, if you look at the Conlang community as if they were like hard drugs type of thing, you got Esperanto, which is like your version of marijuana. It's like your entry into the world. It's nice, it's soft, it's cuddly. It won't hurt you too much. And then you move on to Lojban, which is things are starting to get a little bit violent. And then once you're at the Ifkul, you're, you're lost, man. You're, you're just a zombie on the street type of thing. Anyway, I've sidetracked quite a bit. I wanted to talk about this random computer that someone was building in Tokipona. So check this out. So this is the page I found, okay? And if you have a look right here, that is the computer thing that they've built. Now, it doesn't look like much, but if you go check out the video that's at the end of this and you watch it, which I have a few times. So let me just hit play on this bad boy. Now, because this is in the Wayback Machine, it takes forever for this video to load. Like, I've been sitting here, because I'm cutting, obviously, around this. I've been sitting here for, like, a good two minutes waiting for it to load. And it's the, the anticipation to show you is killing me. So while that is attempting to load, I guess I'll, I'll continue on with my... Um, my random story about Tokipana. So when I saw this article, the problem is it's in Tokipana. So my ability to speak Tokipana is highly limited and it's based on knowledge from like five years ago, but I'm gonna try and break down what I'm seeing on this page. Okay, this video is not loading right now, but basically what happens in the, the video is that this guy likes, he's typing away 
on this like little machine. And you see these glyphs that are appearing on the screen here. They're actually a form of written Tokipana because there's a glyph based system that exists for it. Anyway, we'll come back to that at the end. We'll come up here. So what do we got here? So the first part says me willi willi pali SMS. So I want uh, to do what? So that's like, what, what am I wanting to do? Ilosona, so that's like a knowledge tool. Ale, which I believe means everything. I've actually got a dictionary open on here. Let's have a look. So abundant, countless, everything, life, universe, number 100. Oh, okay. So, um, ale li, wille toki kepeken toki in li. So everything, li is like is. Wille toki kepeken, want to talk by means of, and then toki Inli, Inli, what is Inli? Let's have a look. Inli. No, there's no reference to it. Well, maybe it's Linli. No. Oh man, I'm gonna miss the most important word in this sentence. I just know it. Okay, I can't figure that one out, guys. Like I said, I'm relying on like five years old knowledge of Tokipana right now. So clearly, that's not something I remember. Nili iketawa. Me. So that is, this is disgusting or bad to me. So he's saying, this, this is bad to me. Whatever this thing is here, it's bad to him. Oh, mi willi pale es ilosona. So I want to do a knowledge tool. P is like, I think, of, of tokipona taso. So taso, what is taso? Let me have a look. Particle, but however, or adjective only. Okay, so only a good talk, like only good talking tool? I don't know. But anyway, let's have a look what we've got. So he's got Illo Lookin, that's obviously the screen because it means looking tool. Illo Sitelen, Sitelen, I believe that was like a box or something. Let me have a Sitelen. A picture. Oh, okay, so it's like a picture. So picture tool. Okay, well, I guess this is like a diagram then. Um, and then we've got super nena. I don't recognize either of those words, but here's the, the keyboard that they've built out, the design. And then you've got ilo pali, so that'd be like doing tool. I'm guessing that's what USB is and Tokipon is like it's something for doing. Uh, okay, and then they've got, here's the glyphs. This is what I was talking about. So this is sitelen pona. Um, so this is interesting because when Tokipon first came into existence, um, it used the Latin. A script for Tokipona, but recently I've seen this more and more randomly that people have started using this glyph based system, which I think is really cool. And if I was to get back into Tokipona and actually start learning and properly, because like clearly I don't speak the language, I would totally be using the glyph based system because why wouldn't you use glyphs for such like a limited number of words? It just makes things so much cooler. Anyway, let's see if we can get this video up and running. Will this one work? Come on. Man, I know these videos work because I watched some of them today. Anyway, so as you can see, he's got all the little pieces. He's put it inside the box. And if we come down here, it's like all taped it up. It's ready to go. He's printed it out. Like full on 3D printed the, the actual keyboard and everything. And then you've got the actual tool. And I'm gonna try attempt to play that again one last time. This actually sparked an interest in me to possibly actually go back and start learning Tokipona again because Tokipona to me is just ambiguous, like it's a, it was a little play thing. Uh, but seeing something like this makes it so much cooler and so much like geeky because this type of stuff to me shows that there's, there's actually growth of a considerable degree in the community. Which then actually made me interested, like, is the community growing? So I started searching and I, I found a couple of articles. So apparently there was a Tokipona census done, which is kind of cool. And it's going to give us a bit of an idea about like the language and its current state. Because with Conlangs, it's super rare that anyone speaks them apart from their creator. Uh, so as you can see here, let's just jump down. Where are we at? Because I'm, I'm interested in numbers. I'm a numbers man. Okay. I think that's, what was this? Uh, why do people learn Tokipona? 
So look at this, like Toggy Pond seems to be experiencing some insane growth over the last few years, which is really quite fascinating because we've got now people like 785 responses compared to like 2020. See, I first bumped into it probably around 2015 or something or 2016. So as you can see, the community was quite small back then and then I pretty much never touched it again. Although I saw references to it here and there specifically within the Esperanto community. But this this was really fascinating for me. So, and that that's another thing for me. I like learning conlangs and the fact that there is now actually a community for this language makes me want to learn it so much more. Maybe, you know, jump to the dark side. Wait, no, that doesn't make sense because Tokipon has always got like this happy smiling face type thing. So that would be like jumping to the light side which means that as an Esperanto speaker, I must be on the dark side, which then means I'm the bad one. Oh no, <laughs> no joking. But anyway, yeah, the, the, this is pretty much the only other like conlang apart from um, Volapu, which I'd seriously like jump into actually learning at this stage. That's pretty much it. I'm just rambling now. So I'll talk to you guys uh, next time and I hope you've enjoyed this video.